Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Nothing gives me more joy than doing something for somebody else. But I also know that I need to do things for myself. You know, the whole thing is about balance. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be well balanced, temperate, that means discipline, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Now, this scripture, I think, is extremely important. And I saw this in the Amplified Bible a good 35 years ago when I first started really studying the Bible. And I can tell you that keeping things in balance in your life is probably one of the most challenging things that we have in front of us. Anytime we get out of balance, then we're left with excess. And excess is the devil's playground. If you do too much of something or you don't do enough of something, either one is excess. If you don't eat enough, it's a problem. If you eat too much, it's a problem. If you spend too much money, it's a problem. If you never spend any money on yourself, it's a problem. If you're such a neat, clean freak that all you do is clean and polish and scrub all the time and nobody can even stand in your house and breathe, that's a problem. But if you don't ever clean your house, that's a problem. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? That striking balance in every area of our lives. I think we should exercise, but you can exercise too much. I think you should study the Bible. I think that you should be in Bible study groups if you can, but you can actually do that too much. Some people become so spiritual that they're not one bit of earthly good. I mean, they just got their heads in the cloud and they're praise the Lord, hallelujah, and you know, going around all the time, and yet they ain't really helping anybody. They're just being what they think is spiritual. We have to learn how to stay balanced. God cares about every area of our being. You have a physical body, you need to take care of it. If you wear out the one you've got, then you don't have any machine to get around the earth in. You can't go to the store and buy another one. It doesn't work that way. Here's the thing that I think you have to understand. If you're going to take care of yourself, it's going to take an investment of time, effort, and money, and you should not feel guilty about it. But I just don't have time to take care of me. I just don't have time for that. I'm just going to play like a mama here today and just give you some practical advice. You need to take care of things like your skin, your teeth, your hair, your nails. You need to get some exercise. You need to make an investment in getting good quality food and not just be in such a big hurry all the time that all you ever, ever have time for is a drive through something or other that most of the time has no nutrition in it and is full of all kinds of stuff that's not good for you. It's no wonder people feel bad if we had any idea what we're putting in our bodies half the time. Read a good book on nutrition. Learn a little bit about what you're putting in your body. Read some labels and ask yourself, do I really want to put that on the inside of me? Take the time to get good quality food. Put a little extra money into getting some good stuff. You guys are looking at me like, what does this have to do with Jesus? <laughs> I just want you to tell me about Jesus. <laughs> See, that's our big problem. We just sit around, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then we don't use one bit of wisdom, no common sense. We're out there with our bumper stickers and our Christian jewelry hanging all over us. Everybody thinking we're a bunch of nuts. <laughs> oh my gosh. People ask me all the time. Every time I do an interview, I get asked the same question. Well, there's actually about 10 of the same ones I get asked, but I always get asked, how do you keep your priorities straight 
But this ministry, a wife and a mother and all, an author and all these things you do. And I, I've got, I, God gave me the right answer. I said, I'm always straightening them out. I don't think you just, I have my priorities straight. You might have them straight today. Tomorrow they may get unstraight. Because there's too many things coming at us and too many demands. And we have to learn what to say yes to and what to say no to. And it's not wrong for you to say to somebody, I can't do that for you today. I have some things I need to take care of for me. See, I told you guys you'd like this message. Some of you still aren't sure. You're like, I thought I just heard you preaching on television about forget yourself and sacrifice. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's a good message too. I can stop and preach that one if you want. The whole point is, is we need them all. It's called the whole counsel of the Word of God. There are times to sacrifice. There are times to say, no, I need to take a little break and I need to do something for myself. If you're tired, take a nap. Quit just crabbing about being tired 24 hours a day. Say, I'm tired, I'm taking a nap. If you're just worn out and you've been doing nothing but dealing with yucky stuff forever and you're the kind of person that likes whatever, I don't know, a manicure, a pedicure, a walk, just say, you're not going to see me for a while. I'm going to take care of myself. I mean, we act like the world's going to end if we get, I mean, I know I'm like now, there's one little stretch of highway on our, our highway from our house to getting into the, to the town where we live and there's two little places where there's no cell phone tower. I mean, we can, we can just get wild because we've got like two minutes where we can't get somebody. I mean, we have just gotten ridiculous in our society today. I remember when the only way you could make a phone call was to pull off the road, park your car, find a pay phone, have the right change. You know, you have to always be straightening them out. You can't, I don't think anybody ever just says, well, I've got my life all in balance and you know, I never get out of balance. We're all in danger of getting out of balance. There's just too many things coming at us today. We've got the cell phones, the internet, where people have 24-hour access to us. We have a lot of responsibilities. The world is just a different place today. And you know what I finally decided? The world's not going to change, so I'm changing. If you're waiting for the world to change, it's probably not going to, so you need to change. And you need to make sure that somewhere in your life, you're in there, and that you're doing some of the things that you enjoy doing. What a tragedy it would be to get to the end of your life and say you never enjoyed anything. And you know, I was, I was like probably in my 50s before I got this. I didn't get to be a child. My father was abusing me the whole time I was a child, and so I didn't get to have a childhood. I didn't have a good healthy kid on the inside of me. And so I was just all adult and grown up and responsibility and work, work, work. Well, I want to tell you what, God can restore anything. I'm 68 now and I'm having a blast. But one of the things I learned was to make sure that I enjoyed everything that I did. I enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy going to lunch. I'm going to enjoy taking a nap this afternoon. I'm going to enjoy coming back tonight. Enjoy everything that you do. I used to think, well, if I just get this done, then I can enjoy myself. Well, now if I just get this done, or I'll be glad when, or I'll sure be glad when. How about if somebody gets glad now? <laughs> How about if somebody says, I'm glad right now, and I'm going to enjoy this? I want to teach you for a minute to stop doing things for people and start doing everything you do unto the Lord. I'm having more fun today than I ought to. <laughs> Some of you, you have denied yourself even basic little things for so long, and now you've got this martyr complex. And I'm telling you, today you need to finish that thing off, get it over with. And start saying, it's nobody else's job to keep me happy, it's between me and God. When I need something, I'm going to pray about it. And if nobody else has given it to me and God gives me permission, I'm giving it to myself. 
Servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not only when their eyes are on you as pleasers of men, but in simplicity of purpose with all your heart. Because of your reverence for the Lord and as a sincere expression of your devotion, whatever may be your task, if it's cleaning a toilet, if it's being the CEO of a company, <laughs> if it's driving the carpool for your kids, if it's mowing the grass, if it's changing the oil in the car, whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. Can I tell you something? And I hope this doesn't sound... Please don't take it wrong, but... <laughs> See, I'm, I'm relatively free of needing to impress you <laughs> and being overly concerned about what you think. And because I am, I'm free to be myself. And when you're free to be yourself, then you just have a good time. So, but, and it's not that I'm not here for you. But to be honest, I'm really here for God because I think this is where He wants me to be. And if you can learn, it took me so long to learn this and so much misery I would love to spare you. If you can learn to do everything you do for one, do everything you do and know that God is always watching. And anything that you do, if you do it with a right heart attitude, God will reward you. But if you do it to please people, you are not going to get from those people all the time or even most of the time what you think that you should get. And you're going to be disappointed and you're going to be resentful and you're going to be mad at them. And there's going to be all kinds of relationship problems. And you need to just back the train up today and ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? I actually tell people who work for us, if the only reason why you work here is to get a paycheck, there's no way you're going to be happy here. I mean, we pay our people good, but if your only motive is to get money, then no matter what you get, you need to work somewhere because you believe that's where you're supposed to be. You need to work there because you believe that that's your assignment from God. Maybe there's somebody there that God wants you to minister to. Whatever the purpose, you need, you need to be where you believe you're supposed to be. Get, get, get away from just, well, you know, I've done this for you, and I've done that for you, and after all, I've done for you, and I've done this, and I've done that, and nobody appreciates me, and nobody loves me, and I've given my whole life to serving other people, and now, what about me? I'm just an old person, and nobody cares about me, and nobody loves me. Well, you know what? It's your own fault. You don't sound as happy as I'd like you to. <laughs> you know why? And I understand. Listen, giving up self-pity was so hard for me. I mean, I just, it's stupid to say that you love the pity party, but it was like Dave would go out and play golf and then I'd stay home and cry and feel sorry for myself. How totally stupid is that? It didn't keep him from playing golf. Didn't change a thing. It certainly wasn't pleasing to God. And finally I just decided, you know what? He's going to play golf. I might as well figure out something I like to do and go do it. Now I tell him to go. Go, go. We get along so good. I tell you what, if you just stay married long enough, you'll finally figure out that all that stuff ain't worth fighting about. I mean, there's things that used to make me so mad, now I think they're funny. Now I look back and I think, I cannot believe that I didn't talk to him for a week over that or, you know, that I made such an ordeal over that. Now, I mean, Dave and I are just having a blast. He is so funny. He is just so funny. 
The older you get, the funnier things that you do, especially when you get to the point where you're not just really remembering everything all the time. <laughs> You know something else I enjoy on my list of things I enjoy, and I put it on my list, I enjoy my husband. And I'll tell you something, the Bible says that a woman should enjoy her husband, not rework him and remold him and refashion him and pick him to death and nag him till he never wants to come home, enjoy him. I know some of you right now are wanting to run out of this building. Lady, you do not know what you're talking about. You do not know who I'm married to. It's fine for you to sit up there and say blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, the men that came today, you're liking this one, aren't you? Yeah, well, man, you need to be good to your wives too. Do what you do unto the Lord. Everything you do unto the Lord in secret, He will reward you in the open. But let me tell you, now look, I'm going to tell you something important. Everybody look at me. Now th this is big. This is really big. Every time you do something for somebody and you complain about it, you lose your reward. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to Proverbs 31. Now, guys, you're going to have to bear with me a minute because this is about the perfect lady in Proverbs 31. But there's principles here that can be applied to male or female. So don't get a male attitude. You know, I'm not going to sit here and listen about the lady in Proverbs 31. Because I'm going to show you that she was the type of person that I'm trying to convince you that we need to be. This, I, this lady used to just really make me mad. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. When I first became a serious student of the Word, I thought, yuck, yuck, nobody can be like that. All right, first of all, verse 10. This is for the men. A capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman, who is he who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels, and her value far above rubies or pearls. Guys, if you have got a good wife, you need to appreciate her, appreciate her, appreciate her. Amen? The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently and relies on her and believes in her securely so that he has no lack of honest gain or need of dishonest spoil. She comforts, encourages, and does him only good as long as there is life within her. Ladies, I want you to make a commitment to give your husband at least one compliment every day. Come on, I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Come on, now did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> One compliment every day. Well, bless God, I'm not going to do that. He don't compliment me. Well, then you get to be the first one to do what's right. And if you're not married, then go compliment somebody you'd like to be married to. That's not already married. I thought I better throw that out there. I would think people would know that, but not always. Okay, now look. She seeks out wool and flax and works with willing hands to develop it. Everybody say she works. She is like the merchant ships loaded with foodstuffs. She brings her household's food from a far country. She not only cooks, she's creative about it. She rises while it is still night and gets spiritual food. She gets up early and seeks God and prays and spends time with God before she does anything else. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there, and I don't make any laws about when you need to spend time with God. I know that some people are not morning people and all that stuff, but I'm just going to suggest if you would just make a commitment to spend your first 30 minutes of every day with God, 
fellowship, talk to him, pray, read, listen to music, worship. I can tell you that it will change your entire life. And I can also pretty much say, if you have no time for God in your schedule, then you have got a serious problem, and you are never going to have joy, and you are never going to have peace. She rises while it is yet night and gets her spiritual food for her household and assigns her maids their task. You're thinking, well, yeah, I wish I had a maid. <laughs> well, maybe if you acted like her, you might get one. I don't know. <laughs> she considers a field before she buys it. She's a businesswoman. She accepts it, expanding prudently. I love this, not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties. So she doesn't take on another job unless she knows that it's not going to interfere with the things she's already committed to. How many of you are so overcommitted you don't know which end is up? You know why? Because you've committed emotionally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, I can do that. And then a week later, you're like, what in the world have I done? Think about things before you say, I'll do them. Think about things before you get committed to them. Ask yourself if you really, really, really want to do that. She considers a new field before she buys it or accepts it, expanding prudently, not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties with her savings of time and strength. She plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. She girds herself with strength, spiritual strength, mental strength, physical fitness, the lady in Proverbs 31 exercised. And I know you don't want me to talk to you about exercise, but God gave us all these joints because we're supposed to move. Not just. She makes her arms strong and firm. I'd like to show off my muscles, okay? She tastes and sees that her gain from work with and for God is good. Do you see that? You can't miss that. Verse 18, she tastes and sees that her gain from work, who is it done for? With God and for God. With God and for God. Doesn't say she's doing it for her family. It doesn't say she's doing it for a paycheck. She, she's not doing it to please the boss or to be well thought of. Her work with and for God is good. Her lamp goes not out, but it burns continually through the night of trouble, privation, or sorrow. Even when she has problems, her house, her life is still full of light. Her lamp doesn't go out because she's already got what she needs to be strong through trouble. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hand holds the distaff. Don't give up on me. She opens her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her filled hands to the needy whether in body, mind, or spirit. You can see the kind of, kind of person she is. She's encouraging people. She's caring about people. She's giving to the poor. But what did she do first? She took care of herself. She got up early. She got spiritually strong. She got some exercise. She planned some right menus. She did some things that she enjoyed. Now, you're going to see in a minute, she even made for herself lots of nice outfits. Verse 21, she fears not the snow for her family, for all her household are doubly clothed in scarlet, that's representing the blood of Christ. She makes for herself. You see that? For herself. Not just for everybody else, but for herself. Coverlets, cushions, rugs of tapestry. Her clothing is of linen, pure and fine, and of purple, such as that which is like the priest wore in the temple. I put a footnote, she dresses good. <laughs> dresses good. A shop and I go. Her husband is known in the city's gates when he sits among the elders of the land. I'm sure sometimes Dave gets tired of hearing people say, are you Joyce Meyer's husband? Are you Joyce Meyer's husband? He says, no, nope, she's my wife. But <laughs> the point is well made. She makes fine linen undergarments and leads, no, garments, not undergarments. And <laughs> We're getting fully dressed. We're down to the underwear. <laughs> she makes fine linen garments and leads others to buy them. She delivers to the merchant. And, 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 you know, look. Come on, we're going to finish this. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future, the latter days to come. Verse 26, she opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction. 
she looks well to how things go in her household and the bread of idleness gossip discontent and self-pity she will not eat hello she's like i am not going to sit around here and feel sorry how many of you are seeing this that she was doing a, she's the well-balanced perfect lady our man she's not only taking care of other people she's taking care of herself she gets up first she gets spiritually strong she plans her day she's got some organization she does things she enjoys she has pretty things she wears nice clothes she gets involved in a little business i think it's time that some of you get a life her husband rises up and calls her blessed her children rise up and call her blessed give up the martyr syndrome well nobody does anything for me do something for yourself well I wish somebody would if they don't do it for yourself I'm so tired of this all I do is work 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 well don't work all the time pray and find out what some balance is commit to that don't do anymore so I'm just telling you get some balance and make sure you take care of yourself because it's just as important as taking care of everybody else so don't forget you're going to do a better job at caring for others if you also keep yourself strong and healthy and take care of yourself